War of the Rohirrim, finally, it has been viewed by our eyes. <laughs> it did, <laughs> that was a thing that happened. Just yes. now, we've just got back. So these are initial, right off the bat thoughts. However, everybody else saw it like ages ago. Yeah, they, they don't like inviting us to things and that may not change after this, if I'm honest. Yeah, I feel like the people who are in charge of inviting people to premieres looked at our stuff and went, whoa, they're honest. <laughs> <laughs> don't invite them. Yeah, there's none um, of this try and prove you wrong. Yeah. They no. get scared. Mm. Um, so, where should we start? Let's start by well, saying there's going to be spoilers. Yeah, yeah. definitely spoilers. The, yeah, it's out. There's probably no point doing a non-spoiler review for us. So, should we get into a little bit about the plot? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> was yeah. there a plot? <laughs> uh, there, there was. There, there was. A, there was a plot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the thing is with the plot, and this this is coming from a point of view of someone that knows the law to a relatively mm. decent degree, and mm. someone that very much enjoys the aspect and the, the part of the law that is the Helm 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 story. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure there was enough there outside of what Helm Hammerhand does in the law mm -hmm. for a two plus hour movie. No, I mean, the thing that I remember seeing before it all like was actually done done was they were aiming for a 90 minute movie. That's what this was supposed to have been. It ended up about two and a half hours and then they cut it down to, oh, it was about two hours 10, somewhere mm -hmm. around there. So it, it felt long. Yeah. I'll, I'll give it that. Yes. Yeah, it was definitely bloated and they needed to be harsher with the cut. Yeah. And there's stuff that probably could have come out of it and you wouldn't have actually lost anything from the movie as a whole. Even like non-story wise, there were some mm. moments where they just held on shots for too long. Yeah, yeah. Like there was one where with, with Hera riding out on the horse and it mm. just kind of stayed there and I was like, is she going to speak or? Yes. It just felt too long. Yeah. So, yeah. so even without changing the story much, they could have shortened it just by tightening mm. the edit. Um, but yeah, we're supposed to be talking about plot. Yes. So the film starts with, wait, what was the start? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that was like a few hours ago now. I know. Um, it starts, I think, with <laughs> everyone being called to the hall because Freka wants to yes. speak to the king. That's it, yes. Yeah, so the main kind of thing of one of Helm's biggest moments happens right at the very beginning. Um, and straight away, and okay, we're kind of going away from the plot again already, <laughs> but the animation, and I kind of want to touch upon this now. Okay. Because it's kind of like, it's because I noticed it at the very beginning mm. and it kind of, stuck like it was very bitty choppy might be the right word um it didn't feel smooth yeah i i, I think i turned to you because we had the screen to ourselves by the way so we yeah. could just talk loudly <laughs> throughout it. it was great um the environments seem to have loads of effort and, mm. and detail in them like they really kind of went to work on the on the environments and, mm. and, and recreating middle earth as we know it but then i felt like they put these flat 2d untextured animations over that mm. that really kind of took me back a little bit and I was like it just doesn't quite work and, and, yeah. and I get what you mean the animation is quite choppy but I think the most important thing that let the animation down was the inconsistency mm. you know in One Punch Man yeah where he's like he looks all badass and yeah. cool and then the next it's just an <laughs> oval with like dots in the mouth yes. it kind of felt like that yeah yeah the way I kind of said to you as we were coming out was um for those of you who watch like, you know, Pokemon and stuff as a kid. Um, Dragon Ball's a great example. Dra Dragon Ball, yeah. Like you have the, the one you see every week, the one with episodes and you know, you kind of accept a bit less of it because it's on TV, it's kind of rushed out more. But then they have like the big feature film that comes out in the cinema, you go watch it and everything just feels like it's in high definition. Yeah, smooth. Yeah, this felt like the TV version, mm. not the film version, yeah. which considering it's a solo project just based off that, I was a bit, because like, I like anime, and yeah. that's the thing, and that's why I, was, I felt a little bit disappointed by that. I very much agree. There was a few shots in particular mm. where it just, and it felt very Dragon Ball TV show. Yeah. Where it's like, oh, they've just drawn the outline and made them kind of move a bit. Like, yeah. Just, yeah. For something with this much of a budget, it didn't live up to that. Yeah. But I know there's like notoriously bad working, not I say conditions, like the sweatshops, and they're mm. like time-wise when it comes to animators and what they're asked to do in the amount of time and you can never expect a good result by the demands that are put on them. So I'm not blaming them by any stretch, but I think just the project as a whole, maybe, you know, if they kept to a 90 minute thing and just animated 90 minutes very well, rather than getting up to two and a half hours of okayly animated stuff, 
yeah. okayly animated. Yeah, that, that's Yeah, no, I totally get what you're saying. And I think overall, the animation was a bit of a letdown. Because mm. I, I like the style. Again, I'm a huge anime fan. We both mm. love Dragon Ball and Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! And like, One Punch Man. Mm. Like, there's loads of animes that I'm a huge fan of. Yeah. It didn't make this movie easier to watch. Um, no. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying, that, like, we'll, we'll get to our full thoughts, obviously, mm. throughout this review, but I'm not saying it's a terrible movie. I'm just saying animation-wise, yeah. disappointing. Yeah, and kind of go back to the plot. That kind of first stuck out to me more with that, with literally with Fracca, because it's almost like the voice actor was doing all this stuff, but mm. then his character was kind of like... <laughs> and it just, yeah, so that was kind of why. But anyway, yes, as for the plot. Um, yeah, so kind of Fracca comes in and is like, you know, we don't get along, but your daughter should marry my son so we can get powerful and we can hate on Gondol because we're Rohan. Yeah, which um, it sounds like you're annoyed at that, but that is the story, you know, that is- Oh yeah, no, 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 I'm, not, no I'm not annoyed yeah. by that. Right. No, um, no, but that's just like the, it's just the, like, the way it's, uh, just the way it is, it's just, you yeah. know. I'll say from the get-go, I think we should have had some kind of build-up with the characters, with, mm. with Helm, even with Hera, with Haleth and Hammer. Should have got to know them before it's just like, my turn to be king. Yeah, that felt like that should have been an end of act one that puts you into act yes. two moment, yep. not an opening to a movie. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm not, I'm not gonna say I know exactly what would have come before that, but yes, it definitely felt like that's what kicks on the story into act two, not how we see our first couple of minutes on screen. Yeah, so from this then, it goes on to essentially Helm being like, no, that's not happening. Um, mm -hmm. Let's just, you know, basically I'll show you why you should respect your king, mm -hmm. um, but I'm not brawling in here, so men can fight outside, let's go outside. <laughs> they go outside and then everybody knows what happens, right? It's, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's in the law, it's in the shadow of war. <laughs> One punch and Freck is out, it's gone. Yeah. One and... punch! Just as we've been talking about One Punch Man. Um, <laughs> yeah, very, very uh, apt. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it, it's kind of funny because it's like almost built as this like really like, oh my God, it's horrific. You killed Frecker. And it's like, but he did literally just punch him once. Yeah. So I don't, it felt like a very exaggerated reaction to it. Yeah. Which again, that, that's very like nitpicky anyway, you know. That's... Well, I, I didn't quite, so in this moment, Helm reacts like, but no, it's, it's impossible. I just, I hit him once. You all, yeah. you all saw, right? Yeah. There's witnesses. And that's like, it felt out of character to what yeah, I that's what, yeah. imagined Helm to be. In my head, he was just like, you've come here to disrespect me, I have some of that. Are yeah. you dead? That's what you get. You know, yeah. that, that's how I've always pictured that mm. moment and how I've always pictured Helm. Just being a straight up badass king. Yeah. Not like, oh, everyone saw, <laughs> it wasn't me. Like, yeah, so it felt a bit like, just jarring in terms of character. Yeah, like if he had done that in private, nobody had seen him, then you kind of get the like, oh God, like, yeah, no, I didn't yeah, like, yeah. I didn't go overboard, that was just a punch, but yeah. yeah. So yeah, from there, um, obviously then Wolf, Retru well, he's banished um, and he is never seen from for however long after that. And uh, yeah, the kind of the kingdom goes on for a few years. And then eventually, you know, we cut to, I can't remember the exact amount of time, but a year or two was it? I can't think. Yeah. In the future. And um, we're hearing about the Southrons and everything they're starting to invade, who really weren't as involved as I'd expected them to be by a lot of the... Yeah, same here. Yeah. yeah, a lot of the promotional material, I feel like really steered this film in a different direction to the way it actually was. Yeah. Um, like we saw quite a bit of the Moomook stuff, which was, it was there, but in the end, not very relevant. Um, mm. I felt like we saw a fair bit of the Haradrim kind of stuff, again, not that relevant in the overall film. Um, we saw a lot like things with like the Watcher, yeah. which kind of came at this point, which again, it. It, that felt very shoehorned in. Yeah, it And is. that was one of these moments that I'm like, if your run time's already bloated, did you really need this part in? I think this is a fun time to mention because this is what happened. So th this whole segment, Hera mm -hmm. comes across a, like a, a gone berserk Moomba kill. He's mm -hmm. kind of ravaged, a bit crazed, and uh, on a bit of a warpath. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to defeat it, and uh, they go on like this little kind of almost chase scene. And it comes to this forested area. Yep. And it gets all like quiet and mm. suspenseful and tense. And she's like, where's it gone? Mm. The, the giant elephant. Mm. I, I mean giant. Mm. It's hiding behind a tree. It is. <laughs> it's literally hiding behind yeah. a tree. And you see it go into the forest first. It's like knocking everything out of the way. It can't yeah. fit through a gap because it's a, a dense forest. But suddenly it's like, it's like going. <laughs> yeah. But it's not just ridiculous that it's hiding behind <laughs> a tree. It's ridiculous that she can't see it. Yeah, like you'd hear it in yeah. yeah. It's it's very 
film moment yeah. kind of thing. Um, and again, yeah, that whole section was when I was a bit like, didn't really get a lot from this, if I'm honest. We've no. already been told that she's the fastest rider. We yep. kind of, yeah, um, it was just to add in a Muma, because mm. you know, we remember those, and add in a Watcher, because you know, we remember those. Um, and I th yeah. you saying that, I think it's gotta be, it's gotta be pointed out that a lot of this movie mm. is just, Oh, they'll recognize this bit. Let's throw this bit in. Yes. A, a lot of dialogue is just straight up mm. ripped out from Lord of the Rings. Mm. A lot of just the moments, and, and I'll point them out as we get to them, but yeah. yeah, there's a lot of just rehash it because people know it. Yeah. A lot of that. Okay, so the Watcher in the water pops out of the water mm -hmm. with his little tree hat and kills the Moomer Kill, saves the day. Mm -hmm. And we move on. What happened next? I'm struggling to remember what was what. From there, if, like she's basically just watched the, the watcher go on, on and eat an elephant in like three gulps, which is horrific to think about. Um, <laughs> and then General Targ is there, and you know, I actually, I was okay with Targ's character. I thought it was a really cool character. Yeah, yeah. it was. There's, the, there's a lot of characters in this movie that I mm. very much enjoyed. Yeah, like Targ was very much the, you know the responsible general who you know was wise and made good suggestions yeah. to Wolf, who's in charge. And Wolf was like, Nah, I'll do the opposite again. Nah, I'm gonna do what I want. Mm. And it, yeah, it was one of those, you're just like, just just listen. Um, but yeah, so Targ <coughs> and some randomer basically. Sorry, choked on water. <coughs> Continue. <laughs> so, so yeah, Targ and some person basically kidnap Hera and take her back to Isengard, which is now where they're camped out. Um, this bit made me laugh a little bit because mm. she's like made out, especially in the trailers and mm. well, for most of the movie, she's this badass warrior shield maiden and she's like, get off of me, put me down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Eesh. Uh -huh. Yeah. So she ends up in Isengard um, and, you know, stumbles across some plans and sees this, you know, this stamp sigil, which we'll come back to later because that's important. So then it was Freya Olwyn and the kid. They were there, weren't yes. they? Yes. Because they were the ones all out in the previous bit. Yeah, so they basically rescue her. Olwyn, the middle-aged woman shield maiden, suddenly has a great idea, even though it's not a good idea, but it's an idea, and they somehow rescue her, and she gets inside of Isengard, but there's no... It's one of these moments which you do see in a lot of films. It's not just linked to this, where... They just somehow get past everyone who's keeping guard and watching, get to the place where they need to, and then they make an escape with nobody ever seeing a thing. And it's just... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't... Like, there's no disguise. It's not like she arrives yeah, in, yeah, yeah. in wild men gear mm. and pulls it off and it's like, okay, no, we can escape. It's She's just in her shield made and yeah. stuff. Um, one of my <laughs> worries going into this movie was that they were going to make Hera obscenely powerful and, and uh, uh, you know... Intimidating for no reason. Yes. Like there was no rhyme or reason for why she is a badass warrior. She's just mm. because she's the main character. Miri yeah. Sue is the term, right? Yes. Like a ray. Yes. Um, and there's a there is a bit of that, but I think this is a good example of it. And I I don't want to be this guy, but it's quite in your face that it's written by a woman that mm. really wants strong female lead characters. And, and, yeah. and this is a good moment for, to, to just give an example. Freya Laugh, who's this mighty warrior, he's like, okay, I'm gonna do this. And mm. then the shield maiden is like, no, 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 I've got a plan. Yeah. And then they, they do her stuff and she's the one that does all the fighting and the rescuing. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it is quite in your face, it has to be said. And I think, you know, having strong female leads is a good thing. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not against that. I, there just has to be a reason for it. You know, mm. Freya Laugh is this mighty warrior because he's been through hundreds of wars, mm. for example. Hera has not. You know, she's yeah. never seen battle. And there's moments in this movie that are very apparent that they just want, they want these female characters in these positions despite the fact they don't have reason to be. Yes. Is that, is that being said the right way? I think so. <laughs> I'm, think. Not, I'm not like anti-female lead or anything, you know, at all. No. Um, yeah, it's just, it's got to be written well. Yeah, there's just got to be there's got to be justified reasons for these things, actual character development that gets them to the points where they yeah. can achieve those achievements, tasks, whatever they complete. Yeah. Like, yeah, there's just got to be, and it's, that's no difference between if, if it was a female character or a male character. The character yeah, yeah. is what makes yeah. a good script from a bad script is there's um, 
what's the word? There's like it's like payoffs. Like you show yes. all the, the, the the training equals results essentially. Yeah. Right? Um, I don't know what the, the phrase would be for that, yeah. but yeah, it, I, I agree. Whether it's a if, if we just put Hammer in Hera's role, if Hammer had never seen battle and he was a bard mm. and he just liked to sing mm. along and then was just suddenly all of a sudden this badass warrior, mm. that that would grind my gears. Yeah. These people and these characters are human and need to have reasons to be able to do what they can do, you know? Mm -hmm. yep. No one's naturally gifted at things like this. No. Unless, apparently, you're a shield maiden. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Yeah. But Moving on. So, yes, they've been rescued. They then go back to Edoras, mm -hmm. and they basically know they're going to be attacked. Wolf is planning, building his army, he's going to attack Edoras, and they're like, oh, well, it's fine, because, you know, they're going to be here in a, a day or so, they're going to rest, and then they're going to attack, and we're going to meet them on the plains. And Helm Hammerhand's like, yeah, okay, well, we'll get the, uh, was it Thorns 300? Yeah. Was that when the other guys yeah. would come, it's 300? And then, yeah, basically, they'll take the east, I'll take the middle, and uh, the other general, who I can't remember his name, Basically, yeah, they'll have three lots, and then they'll meet them on the plains. This scene really annoyed me. <laughs> Which part? Um, because, <laughs> so, they're gathered, mm -hmm. and Freylaf is like, King, Helm, dude. They have this plan, but there's more to it. Mm. I don't think the, the Moomer Kill appearing is a coincidence. I think they're, like, teaming up with the mm. Southrons, and there's going to be more to this attack. And Thorn's like, no. Mm. No, not at all. It's fine. I'll commit 300 mm. men. We'll meet them on the battlefield. We're all good. And then Helm is just like, just rips into Freyalf. And he's like, yeah. no, you're supposed to protect my daughter. You got her in danger and never want to see you again. You're banished. Mm. Like, Bear in mind, he, know, didn't... He, he just saved her. Like, yeah. <laughs> or at least, at least part of it. Yeah, um, like, she's still there. She, she's unhurt. Yeah. Like, it's not like... And he's very clearly speaking logically as well. Mm. You know, he's not like he's suggesting crazy things. He's like, I think there's yeah. also a bigger threat. Like, yeah. yeah, it's not like Helm's been through anything at that point either to make him mm. think irrationally. Like, if he had just been through the long winter and, like, he was starving, his people are starving, and then he starts acting irrational, that's, you understand that motivation to why they start acting that way. Yeah. But at this point, it's all good. Yeah. Okay, yeah, his daughter, you know, he was scared for her. She's back and she's fine. She's unharmed. Yeah, I, I, yeah. it just didn't feel like Helm Hammerhand again to me. Yeah. Not that there's that much to his character in terms of writing, but no. not what I pictured. I think I just literally turned to you during that scene and I was like, Helm's mm. a bit of a dick. Yeah. Like, he really is. Like that, that it's not yeah. a really and, very nice response. Yeah, and also because it and there were, obviously there will be moments, because there isn't much law to it, like you said, that this goes against the law, in that Freylaf was never like banned. He was never mm. shunned away. He was he's never sent away and like disowned. Yeah. Um he just went to Dunharrow in a separate situation while they went to the Hornburg later on and tried to raise an army and tried to get some reinforcements from Gondor that way. Yeah. So they, like, it very much felt like they went, you know what story beat worked really well in The Lord of the Rings? <laughs> Aomir. Yeah. He got kicked out, then he returned with reinforcements. So it just felt like they were trying to rehash that yeah. rather than do and what was Every aspect done. of that story element plays out exactly the same as Two Towers. Yeah. Exactly the same. Yeah, and again, that's, that's where the issue comes. It's just, I don't know how many times you've said it before, especially with like Rings of Power and things like that. Like, Original stuff is good and can be great, but you don't need to use an existing IP mm. to then change it to try and make something original. If you want to be original, be original with something completely original. Don't just change what already exists yeah. when there isn't even much that already exists. So it's quite easy to include all the already that exists stuff and then expand and adapt and you know enhance that as much as you can. Yeah. But to change what's already there, which I'm feeling unnecessary moments was just a bit... Mm. It just makes me feel like, <sighs> yeah, you know? Yeah. So here is where we get to the, the charge initially, right? And there's, there's another kind of dumb moment where someone comes and says, oh, they're not stopping. Mm. They're coming straight for us. And I think Hera says, yeah. oh yeah, they always attack at night. Like, well, yeah. So if you guys know that they always attack at night, why yeah. would you start expecting yeah, them she's to... Like, yeah, they're well trained at attacking at night. Like, yeah. they, they do it a lot. And you're like, <laughs> yeah, but they're not going to attack at night. Yeah, surely they should have anticipated that. Yeah. So anyway, they muster their warriors. They're going to meet Thorn and his 300. Who's, mm -hmm. and he's taking the eastern flank or whatever. And they're going to meet them on mm -hmm. the plains outside of Edoras. All of this sec segment coming up now mm -hmm. is just Pelennor. Yes. Yeah. The, 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 this fragments of the speech, mm. like, Arise, riders of Helm. 
uh, death, yeah, know, four their lingers, all like, that is repeated. Yeah, um, and then even you know as things start going well in the battle, they've charged, they defeat in the tribesmen, then the Mumuks appear, mm. and then it's literally on me, reform the line. It's, yeah. it's exactly the same, exactly yeah. the same. Yeah, and then even the charge towards the Mumuks, like it's even that's yeah, yeah. This is why it yeah. was cool, but but yeah. also like you say it was cool, but obviously you have. You know, and it's always hard because we will always compare it to the Lord of the Rings. That's always going to happen and you can't escape from that. And they were so good at everything they did. So not like I'm trying to say that they need to match that level because they don't need to match it because that was like an impossible thing that all came together so perfectly. But these battles just felt a bit empty. They, they yeah, just didn't I, feel I, like there was much to it, even though, you know, you had like, in theory, hundreds of riders, even though there weren't mm. either. Um, charging into Oliphant's Moomakill, and it just felt a bit lackluster. Yeah, to be honest, I, that, that's something I always, for the most part, feel with anime, though. There's never as much punch to the battle as you want it to be. And I think it's because it's not live action. There's not that, like, mm. whether it's subconscious or not, that relation to it. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe, I mean, it's tough, like, Again, if I think of an anime I like a lot, or if I know some people argue it's not, but Dragon Ball um, very much is an anime. But like the battles in that, I feel hit. Albeit yeah, they, it's a very they, different they style. So, yeah. But I know what you mean. Yeah, but if it, it is a hundred be a hundred, they'd probably just have that and then smoke or something. You know, like it just, <laughs> it just would, it wouldn't have <laughs> done that. It's a big smoke <laughs> board coming up, and the elephant's foot poking up here, <laughs> how <I'm> sticking up. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. But yeah, no, that was just a general thing. It like. Yeah, it all felt a bit yeah. empty at times, yeah. which was a bit... Mm. Now, what I will say at this point is we got to see a lot more of Hammer and Haleth during yes. this battle. And both of them were very, very cool characters. And I'm going to say mm. Haleth especially, which is ironic because after having the starter set for mm. uh, the Middle Earth strategy battle game, I kind of just assumed I was going to prefer Hammer. Mm. Um, but Haleth was, was awesome. Really, really cool character. Great design. Uh, good voice acting and just yeah had the cool badass moments. He yeah. almost had the Legolas moments. Almost, but that's what was kind of good is he almost did, but then he was he didn't. Yeah. Like the, so. Okay, we might need to skip forward in the plot a bit to kind of get to the next point, I guess. Um, so they have the the yeah, I mean they kind of succeed. Helm gets injured and then they all start retreating. Mm. Um, because we don't need to go into massive detail. This you don't you're not here to hear every single detail about the film. I guess. No. <laughs> um, yeah, so they end up retreating and um, Hammer's horse is too slow, which they'd built up to before. They'd already hinted it. Yeah. And then basically he's making like, a, it looks like he's gonna make a final stand. He's basically gonna go and, you know, shoot. He's got his bow. He's gonna shoot the four that were charging him basically yeah. and go down fighting. It's quite epic. Um, and, and then, then it cuts. It, yeah, then, <laughs> then, then it cuts, um, which I can kind of get. Like, it, it was almost like the Faramir charge. You know, yeah. you didn't need to see every hour go into him. No. And it was just that heroic moment of like, you know what? I'm going to go down as a warrior. Yeah. And then he's kind of there captured. But I remember um, saying to you like, oh, they actually just killed Hammer off, mm. off screen. Because yeah. that would be very disappointing because Hammer dies. He pretty much dies in the snow, I believe, in, in the story. He dies due to the, the winter. Yes. At least. Yeah. So that was, yeah, I was thinking he can't die yet. Yeah. Unless they're really going to change that. Yeah. Um, but at this point, Haleth had already had his cool moment in death. Yes, right. uh, true, yeah. I suppose we have kind of skipped over that yeah, one. Yeah, so Halith, he takes down uh, a Moomakill all by himself. Mm. It's a very legolas moment. It's very cool. Mm. He's, a, he's a bit of a badass. He lands, jumps off, raises his sword, and he's like, for Rohan, mm. for our people! And then he gets an arrow through his mm. neck. Mm. That was a great moment. Yeah. And in a very short amount of time that we spent with him in this mm. film, I was gutted. So, yeah. No, man. I knew he was going to die, obviously, but like, it was a good moment, mm. good death. But it's still, I've still guessed that he died. Yeah, it was one. It's kind of what I was trying to get with the, both of the brothers. I wish we'd spent more time with them. For sure. Um, they felt very much like they were pushed to the side. Yeah. And we had, we had to spend a lot more time with Hera. With Hera, which yeah, she's the protagonist of the film. I get that, but yeah. I felt like they were. Shouldn't have been. I, I, I felt like because they were brothers and sister. I felt like you could have had them all yeah, together yeah, yeah, yeah. more to get more of a relationship of all three at the yeah. same time. It's a funny one because I think looking at this and, and having said that, a lot of people will have opinions on who they think should have been the main character. Mm -hmm. uh, it obviously comes down to personal preferences. There's going to be people out there that are very happy with Hera as the lead, mm -hmm. and 
there's going to be people out there that, you know, would have, if I had the choice, picked her as the lead. Mm. That's fine. I would have picked Halif and Hammer as like a duo lead. Um, See, I would have gone different as well. You would have just gone Helm. I would have gone Freylaff. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. yeah he, well, he has key moments in this whole story in the mm. law, so yeah, it makes sense. That's what I thought would have made the most sense, like if in keeping with the law, yeah. I think Freya Life could have made the most sense, but yeah, there's not much on any of them, so. No, it is a shame, it is a shame. Mm. So, story-wise, Hama yes. dead, Hama dead. No. No, captured. Hama captured, yeah. So we get back to, to the Hornburg now, <laughs> mm -hmm. where they've retreated. Uh, the king, during this assault, also was wounded with multiple arrows. Yep. Uh, and Hera has taken him back to the, to the keep to, to heal. Mm -hmm. At this point, Wolf and Targ and some tribesmen arrive with a captured hammer mm -hmm. and Helm is begging. He's still got arrows mm. sticking out of him yeah. at this point and he's like, look, take, my, take me, take my life, leave my son, leave my people, mm -hmm. you can have the throne, you win, I surrender, it's done. Just mm -hmm. leave my son alone. And then Wolf, mm. you know, the writers had to give us the moment that make us really hate him mm. and, and want him to die and care about the plot. So, just... Cuts Hammer's yeah. throat. Again, after Targ is like, maybe take the deal. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's like, <laughs> yeah, wise old man, yeah. Targ. He's like, dude, just once they close those gates, we're not getting inside yeah. that, that fortress. So take Helm, take the throne, do it. Yeah. And then he just goes, nah, slice. Yeah. And, and Targ says, what have you done? Like, mm. it, it's, a, it's a good moment. And again, there are good moments throughout this movie. Yeah, like one thing I will say is, like, Say like the character of Wolf. Like he was a good, good he was a good yeah. character. Like I felt sorry for him at the beginning. Like he kind of came, you go, ah, oh, he's just, you know, he's the pretentious, feels like the world's owed mm. to him kid. Yeah. And actually, no, I do feel kind of sorry for him. And then he's the moment that made you go, okay, no, like he's yeah. he's not good. He's gone too far. Like he had he had an arc and mm. I, I liked it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe a little bit extreme. He went from yes. one thing to that just from yeah. his father dying, but Grief does crazy yeah. things to people, and yeah, I mean, you watch his dad get punched to death in front of him, so. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. Um, yeah, the, to be honest, if we're looking at characters, there aren't actually many characters in this that I didn't like. No. The characters that I was supposed to dislike, I disliked, and the characters mm -hmm. I'm supposed to like, I really liked. Yeah. Even Hera, like, while I don't think she should have been the lead because she was, mm. she's not much in the law, I didn't dislike her character at all, really. Nope. Likeable character. Yep. Um, yeah. So, Helm needs healing. Mm -hmm. Sons are dead. Yep. The harsh winter is really setting in. Yes. Helm is basically being put onto a bed to heal, and he's just not waking up. Um, as much as they're like, his body's healing, but he must have mentally given up. Again. Grief. Yep. Death of both of his sons within a few hours of each other is going to do that to you. Yeah. Um, especially seeing them both in front of your eyes as well. Yeah. Um, that's going to really mess with you. So yeah. That's fair. So, and they've kind of been looking at supplies um, in, mm -hmm, yeah. in the Hornburg at this point, and there's not a lot. So basically very much setting up, like they're gonna struggle, let alone being trapped. Yeah, and at this point there's thousands of tribesmen setting up camp mm -hmm. right in front of the Hornburg, building a siege tower. Yeah, the, that took like so long to build. It would do, it would it, do. It would, yeah, but it felt like in terms of screen time, there was a lot. Mm. A long time between when they introduced the idea of it yeah. to what it did. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I like at this point now, we get to the moment in the law that's it's definitely the coolest in Helm's story. <laughs> uh, where we hear about him marching out into the, the plains, into the Dunlending camps mm -hmm. and killing people. And the legend of Helm Hammerhand, this is where it kind of grows and he's yes. known to be like this wraith, this beast, yes. this monster. Um, I like how we were introduced to this part of the story through the eyes of the wild men. The yes, men. yeah. yeah. It's very cool. Yeah, that was well done. I did like that. Um, it was, a, so I guess we kind of got to go a bit further to kind of come back to the point I want to make. So let's, let's continue with what kind of happened next. So there was a lot of this stuff and then they like, obviously they can't find him and they make it say like, you know, night after night, the horn sounds and the endings die kind mm. of thing. And then they're kind of trying to find him, look around and Hera stumbles upon this one way passage. She ends up, you know, going through it, um, basically, was it basically through the glittering caves, I think is what they were hinting at. Yeah. Maybe. Um, and then this was the secret passage out, I guess they were talking about in the two towers to get the women and children out. Um, I think maybe. Possibly. Um, possibly. But yeah, so then kind of gets the outside and what does she see in front of her? Two orcs. 
What does she do? Just walk straight out. And Mary and Pippin Hawks. Yes, yes, Mary and Pippin Hawks. Um, and it was just a bit like one of those, I don't understand why you would do that moment. If you know what I mean? She just tried to sneak past them. Uh, yeah, but it's just, I don't know. It's just a weird, so there was something that just felt off. Like that felt like a very shoehorned in moment that was just unnecessary. Maybe just the orcs in general. They just didn't really need, like we didn't need orcs to go, huh, we're collecting rings for some unknown reason. It just yeah. felt very like, remember the rings? Yeah. To me, I, yeah, I think maybe that was more of it. It was just unnecessary. I mean, the snow troll's really cool. Um, I yes. think the main reason for it is to give Hal a moment where he's... Yeah, but that just could have been some the landings. That's what's been sieging, that would make sense. Yeah, but like, the landings aren't scary compared to a snow troll. Showing that he's going mm. fist to fist with a snow troll is way more... Yes. It, okay, it shows yeah. that he's really, first of all, lost the plot. Mm. <laughs> he's just but then she, him. But she saves him. Yeah, she ends up saving him. She actually kills the troll. Yeah, yeah so... Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Girl power. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but then, okay, the, yeah, this is the bit that then kind of confused me a bit. Maybe I missed something, and if I did, let me know what I did miss exactly. Mm. But then Helm goes, basically, the only way back now is to go back through the gates. Yeah. So this implies Helm has been sneaking out this one-way passage every night, killing Dunlendings, and then going back through the gate. <laughs> but there's never been a sign the gate has been opened. It's been frozen shut. That is literally the problem they come up against. It's yeah. frozen shut. And he can't part it enough to get through himself. Mm. So how is he doing this night after night? And if he's not going back in that way, then there was another way for them to go back in and that whole part was pointless anyway. So unless I missed the exact reason why that was the only way they could get mm. back, or I misunderstood how long he'd been going out on the nights and killing them for, whether it had been the horn had blown several times in one night, rather than... I feel like I, it must have been. I felt like they made it sound like it was night after night after night, but maybe not. Maybe that's something I misunderstood, but that's otherwise... it should have been. Yeah, but otherwise I just kind of didn't get... Yeah. Something there just didn't add up to me and it felt very like, oh, well, we need this to happen, so maybe they just won't think too hard. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I got what you're saying. But hopefully we just... Oops, yeah, misunderstood something. Hopefully. Um, at this point then, they run back to the, the ramp, they get mm -hmm. to the gates, the gates are frozen shut, they can't get mm -hmm. in, so Helm gets his guns out, he's in his vest now, he's yeah. just like, check this out, guys. <laughs> Forces it open, and then Harris slips through and he's like, Okay, bye. Yep. <laughs> and she's like, no, we still need you. Don't, don't sacrifice yourself. And he does anyway. <laughs> yeah, and in the amount of time he waited, had the speech, and then closed the gate, probably could have opened them enough to get in. He definitely or, could have, for sure. It's, it's one of those, like, for me, like, I get the speech moments in films, but I also kind of like it where it's almost like this, that moment's going to happen, but then he gets attacked before he can even mm. fully say it. So it's like, he doesn't actually get that closure. And that's what affects Hera more, is that, he didn't get to say his final words to mm. her because of all this moment. And then that kind of adds a bit more to her character and what could happen next rather than have that end moment and then he closes the gate. Do you get what I mean? It's like, yeah. it's almost like, yeah, if they'd reached him before he could have got it to prove why there wasn't enough time rather than go, well, there might have actually been enough time. It's like the Titanic on the wood yeah. thing where it's like, if she had moved up, he could have got on. It's yeah. like, if you just gave it five, like that two more seconds of pulling the door open, Yeah, I think the entire gone. point they're trying to get to though is that he's, he doesn't want to go in there with her. He's, he's ready to just yeah. stand there and yeah. take revenge mm. for his son's death. And it was cool. It's, it was very cool. It was. And it's, it's what I wanted to see. I wanted to see Helm going out fighting mm. to the point where he just freezes in the snow with his fists up, yeah. still defiant and ready to go. Like, that is what makes Helm so yeah. cool. Although there was another moment that made us be like, wait. And again, you might complain that we're being nitpicky. <laughs> we're not, we're just kind of going to go through it and say what we're thinking about each part of the time. But when he's frozen, he's got his hammer. Yeah. What? Which, where did that come from and how did it get there? Like, <laughs> but yeah, it was just one of those strange moments. Of his, it wasn't even like a hero was giving him a fighting chance weapon at the end. No, and, yeah, like, really weird. It was just, yeah, it yeah. was strange to have him in that final iconic pose with a weapon that had no, we hadn't seen. Yeah. Up and the whole point, point is he's supposed to be stood there with his fists up. So why has he got a hammer? Yeah, I know. It's just, yeah. Strange Any, decision, that. Anyway, anyway. Um, Overall, very cool scene. Yeah. So from there, we have basically the long winters getting harsher. Um, and they're going to have to escape because the siege tower is basically finished. Yeah. Um, and it, it's a different siege tower. Yeah. It, was, it wasn't quite what I was expecting. It's a suicidal drummer siege tower. <laughs> yeah, so they built, they built a big tower because they're out of range of the archers and they kind of, you know, establish that. Um, so they build it for then something that can then go up at the top 
and then it falls and bridges that gap. Yeah. If you think how far an arrow can go, especially mm. when it's been shot from a height. Yeah. Oh, and that, it's long. So when it hits the wall, in reality, it's just going snap. And it's made of wood. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, very, like, there's a lot of, it would take us five minutes to think of a way to defend yourself against it, mm. let alone, like, you know, military yeah. specialists. Um, but then again, but it, it's anime as well, so you expect these kind of yeah, things. They're also without their leader, I suppose you could say, so they're not... Hera's maybe... still there. Yeah, she's never seen battle before. Orwin's still there. She's, she's made most of the decisions, She's actually. seen one battle, and Hera's seen none. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, the siege happens, and it all kind of leads now to a cumulative, mm -hmm. like, final moment where Hera is like, all right, I'm going to go and face Wolf. Mm -hmm. So she decides to put on a wedding dress. I'm going yes. to battle. I'm going to wear a wedding dress that's not mine. Yes. Good which, armor. which, something we haven't touched upon either, actually, is it comes from the crazy old woman who's like the keeper of the keys of Helm's Deep. Yeah. Which, I just didn't get that character. Yeah. I just didn't understand the point of her and why it Strong, was. Strong, independent woman. <laughs> yeah. I just, it was just one of those. I just, again, another character that I was like, you cut her out completely. I lose nothing from this movie. It's true. Um, true. But yeah, anyway, yeah. So Hera challenges Wolf. They have their one-on-one -on -one fight yeah. while Olwyn holds the entire bridge. Um, and there's some soldiers with actual, like, you know, more weapons and stuff that are, like, well back. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, the fight happens. Basically, Hera wins. She dominates him. Um, it's this guy that's seen loads of battle against a, a girl that's never seen battle, and she just mm. dominates. This is what I, this is my only yeah. complaint. It's the Mary Sue thing. How has she beaten him? Well, their argument will be, they showed that she beat him as a kid. So they've shown as a True. kid, yeah. she was stronger. But in theory, if Wolf's been, been fighting in battles, he's got experience, he should be, and he's a grown man at this point, not yeah. a little boy. Yeah. Then you would think, in theory, but it's it's one of those. It's main character protection. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you know she wins, and then there's another moment where Targ. I think again he <laughs> targs like, you know, that's just we we've lost enough. Should we just you know give give up on this now? Yeah. It's just is it really worth it? So he stabs him. Yeah. As you do. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it made me not like, again, like we said earlier, not like the character of Wolf, but mm. like him as a bad guy. He's a good villain. Yeah. Um, yeah, so like pulls out a dagger, stabs Targ, Targ dies, and then there's another similar moment in a moment with Hera where mm. it's almost like Fane in the, the surrender to then mm. pull out a sword again and try and stab her. Mm. Yeah, which he stabs her to the side. So she's, I'm assuming it was a dodge? Because yeah. he basically runs up to her, stabs her, but then the sword's like, Oh, here. Yeah. So I'm assuming, was that his way of like asking to be killed? I don't, it, I don't know. Yeah, it, again, it was one of these moments that it kind of happened. I was like, I just... But what happens here is it looks like maybe he is going to kill her. Yeah. And then an eagle flies past and distracts him. Oh, we haven't even touched upon the eagles. Oh, we haven't talked about the eagles. Okay, we'll come back to the eagles because that... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll come back to the eagles. Yeah, so yeah, basically, yeah, the eagle saves the day. <laughs> the eagles are coming. Yeah, and... um. Because oh that's god, something. yeah, that's okay. Yeah, so we've missed like a whole part here. <laughs> so before all this, before the siege actually like, so when after Helm's dead, and in this moment where you know Hera has a plan, not a good plan, but she has a plan. She climbs the cliff face with she does just like you know a couple of pickaxes and stuff. Gets to the she top, Galadriel's it. Yeah, she very much does, and gets to the well, the top of ledge, uh, however high up it was. And there is a giant eagle. Bear in mind, these fledgling eagles, these white ones, are supposed to be like smaller versions of the eagles. This one was huge. Yeah. Um, but again, it's anime, some size proportion stuff that yeah. I can forgive any of that. That's, that's no problem. Um, yeah, and then she kind of talks to the eagle and goes back. And then you obviously realize in time that the idea is the eagle takes Helm's armor, flies it to Freylaf as a way of going, oh, we need your help now, please come. And... Why do the eagles need to be used? What, like, obviously, we know why. Freylaf was sent away to told not to come back, so he has to have motivation to actually come back. But, but eagles can't talk in this. They can, it, uh, there's a line well, she, that she's, says they can talk to wizards. Yeah, but then she also says you can understand the tongues of men or something. So what, did the eagle go to Freylaf, give him the armour and be like, 
Here's Helm's armor, you should put it on and then come to their aid here at this time. No, the eagle landed, started addressing him, putting that <laughs> armor on him, and then was like nudging him in the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> she brought him a note. Uh, but yeah, it was just like, again, what? it was just why did the eagles, why did they even need to have an eagle in this movie? Apart from going, it's yeah. the eagles. It was another thing that if you could have rewritten it quite easily without the eagles. Easily, yeah. And like, it's a story of like men, like the race of men, not just men. Um, it's a story of the race of men and, you know, kind of overcoming some odds and surviving. Basically, like yeah. harsh conditions, harsh situations and overcoming it on the other side. And they kind of made it not they about them. They should have them. given this to that kid character, that Leaf. It should have just, that should have been like his dangerous mission. Go out with this armor, find Freya laugh. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I, this movie could have been made a lot better if you just took the eagles out. Yeah. Yeah. So... Eagle saved the day. <laughs> yep. So just as uh, we're about to, uh, you know, come to the end of this wolf battle, Eagle flies past for some reason mm. and like distracts Wolf, and he's like, "Huh?" And then, yeah. well, as he looks up, he sees yeah. the silhouette of Helm Hammerhand. Mm. It's Helm's armor. Yeah. All the Dunlandings are terrified because they think the wraith of the wraith. He's, he's a, here. He's gone. Yeah, he's somehow here. back alive and everything, which would work. Like I get. Yeah. Like that yeah. was that was good. Um, but obviously, yeah, Freylaf comes down. And does two towers moment. And... <laughs> it's literally the Aomi moment. It's yeah. the top of the hill mm. <laughs> the, 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 to the king kind of moment. Yeah, you know? very much so. And they charge down. Yeah. And you know, right. Freylas going down and killing them all. And then Hera's like, you know what? We shouldn't kill them. Let them go back to their loved ones. Mm. Um, Compassion. Which is like, okay, fine. You know, be the good guy. Um, and yeah, and then we kind of cut back to... Edoras, everything's kind of good again. Freylaf is now king, the first of the second line, and... But he has to add in that she should have been. Yes, oh yeah, no, she should have. <laughs> no, she should have ruled. She should have no, ruled. No, she didn't want to. Um, yeah, not, not really how passing down kingship works um, <laughs> in any of the law like that, but, you know, sure. Um, yeah. And yeah, and then it's kind of happily ever after yeah. for the end of his days. But um, also, we do two, two more things. Yes. We get introduced for absolutely no reason whatsoever to the new owner or tenant of Isengard. Yep. Which, uh, um, you know, Saruman walks in and just goes, if you ever need anything, mate. And that's, that's yep. the end of that. And then as Hera, you know, the story ends, she's like, right, I'm off. Um, uh -huh. Gonna go and speak to a wizard. <laughs> it's just like, it's the biggest no, no, power no. over it. What, what's this wizard called? Gr he's a grand elf. <laughs> <laughs> no, but first is. Oh, yeah, sorry, he's got many names. Yes. And it's just like, just answer the question. Yeah, they just ignore it then. They yeah. literally ignore it. And she pulls out a letter that's got his symbol on it. Yeah. Um, we're like, we're, as if we needed to be yeah. shown it any more clear. And then eventually she's like, the one name he goes by is <laughs> Gandalf. Yes. What? And the yeah. crowd went wild. We were just like, ah, Gandalf. They mentioned Gandalf. Oh my God. <laughs> is that what they were expecting when they wrote that? I like, don't I, Madness. I don't know. Yeah, it's literally um, like Rings of Power. Yeah. So that kind of brings it into a kind of plot summary. Um, <laughs> it went like this. Yeah. It, it, we got there in the end. We got, well, we got somewhere in the end. Yeah. I think there's a few points we missed as well, thinking about it. It is. Um, it's all right. It's all right. It's a review. So, yes. So with that, then, what, okay. What would you rate this, then? Would you consider it a good film? A good Middle Earth film? Would you consider it modern Hollywood woke black? Um, I, I feel just... like I want to give it a bit of everything. Like there's elements of this I really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. um, there's ways I could definitely make it better. <laughs> I'm not talking big myself up, I'm just saying. There's some obvious things. Um, there's a bit of that Hollywoodization mm -hmm. to it, which you've got to expect, um, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But overall, if I, before I give my, my, my score, my review, mm -hmm. I say the characters that should be the main characters should be the main characters. Freya, Laf, Her, uh, Hammer, Haleth. The ones that are in the lore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you should probably drop the duration of the movie by 20 to 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Remove the eagles mm -hmm. and give us better animation. Mm -hmm. then, then I would have said this is a very good movie. But because of what we got, I'd say it's a average movie. 
So if you're going to give it a score out of 10 then, where would you be placing it? I'd probably give it a 6. Okay. Um, because there's characters I really enjoyed. Like Haleth I thought was really cool. I'm really excited to use him now in the game. Mm. Yeah. Um, Helm I thought had some great moments and they portrayed the cool elements of his mm. story quite well. Um, but there's too many negatives to go higher than that. A 6 is quite a high generous score for me. Mm -hmm. But I, I want to be positive for a change, you know? <laughs> We're so negative all the time. Mm. <laughs> Go on, James, yeah. be negative then. Yeah, okay. Um, I really, really wanted to love this movie. Yeah. I really, really did. I love what it's based on. I love the idea of it. I love Peter Jackson's universe. And I love anime. In theory, that comes together and you go, like, home run, easy peasy. Yeah. Really don't have to do much thinking at all to get this right. Yeah. But they overthought so much of it. Yeah. It really brought so much down for me. Kind of, I guess, echoing a lot of what you said, there's just so many bits that were added in as remember berries. Yeah, oh, Which for sure, were yeah. just not necessarily. And it actually took me out of the movie. They weren't like a yeah, nice little nod same. of going, oh, this was a cool moment from that one thing that you really liked. Mm. It was going, no, remember? No, but remember. Remember the thing we made that was really yeah, good? You guys liked this bit, so you'll like it again. Yeah. And, <laughs> It just, it felt so in your face, not as a, like, a proper, you know, subtle nod. It just mm. felt like, you know, you will remember this. Mm. And that's what really just took me out of it. And I think the worst thing I can say is that, like, we left the cinema. And one of my first things was, I just don't want to watch it again. Yeah. Like, there wasn't that thing that I get with a, like, like, say, with The Lord of the Rings, when it was the case, we went back, like, 10 times for each movie to watch each one in the cinema. Mm. Um, I just don't have any interest in re-watching it. Not even... It's how I felt. I felt the same way with the Hobbit movies. When Unexpected Journey came out, the first that one, we were, one yeah. I was very, very yeah. into. And then it kind of got yeah. a bit worse as it went on. But this one is very much a... Yeah, I just... I've seen it. It was all right. Mm. But I don't have that burning desire to go oh no, I need to see it again and like, you know, relive that another time. And that's it's, just it's not a, good. It's a massive cop out and I didn't want to have to have this opinion, but I would have preferred it in live action. <laughs> <sighs> I'm not sure I wouldn't necessarily preferred it in live action, but I, I, would, I would have preferred it in smoother animation. Yeah, during which, that, like Hallett's moment and stuff though, I literally turned to you and I said, imagine this in mm, live action. Like, like yeah. Hammer's final stand. Like all these things would just have hit so much harder in live yeah. action, I think. Um, and that's an, I'm an anime fan, so, mm. yeah. Yeah, the thing's like, I don't want them to give up on anime in Middle Earth, in a way. No. Like, and we've said it before on, on the channel, like, I think if they did a What If series, like they've done with Star mm. Wars, if they did that, cartoon animated for Middle Earth, then you don't have to worry about padding all these things out. Yeah. Just make the short sections of stories that focus on characters in certain moments, and put out a bunch of those, and they could be incredible and be yeah. so well received. What if Saruman and, never turned evil? Like, all yeah. These yeah, it could be, could be really cool. Or even just, they may don't even have to be what ifs, they could just be like, um, like Tales of the Jedi and stuff, where they just yeah. give a bit of backstory, you know? Yeah. Let's see some first age moments, let's see the moment that Luthien put Morgoth to sleep mm. and they stole a Silmarill, let's see that. Um, you don't need a full film, because you can just focus on those moments, and the fans will love it. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, so I don't want them to give up on it as an idea. But the issue with this one has been, and it's been said from the very beginning, is they very much rushed this whole project. To because the they, Yeah, because they were going to lose the rights. Mm. And straight away when that is a thing, it makes you worry. Because mm. it's a, we've got to get this done, not I'm so passionate about this project, let's see what we can get done. Yeah. I, I hate to say this, but I, I think um, Philippa Boyens needs less creative control over this IP. Yes. Um, I feel like there's very much a home run with The Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. um, that's that. Yes. Mm. And, I mean, people can correct me if I am wrong with this, but from what I can tell and what I've, you know, researched, heard, and kind of what appears to be the case is she was just a writer on Lord of the Rings. She wanted to give Arwen more moment. She wanted to have her in Helm's Deep. That was kind of mm. her creative ideas and they kind of watched the film brought it back and was like this doesn't work we're keeping it as yeah. it was nothing because she was a woman it just didn't work having her there for yeah. the way the story worked came to the hobbit she got more creative control and she was the creative um like pressure behind having the tauriel keely 
Alf Dwarf love story, which is a lot of people's least favorite part of those movies, yeah, the fact sure. that was put in. And now she's been given more creative control. And this isn't as girl bossy as there are other things out there. Mm. This is by no means the worst case of like that as a thing. Um, Hera's not an awful character in that sense no. by any stretch. But I just feel like, yeah, she needs to be kind of pulled back a bit. And that's nothing against her at all. Like, she was a massive part in a massive thing in both of our lives in creating the Lord yeah, of the Rings. for sure. And we absolutely love her for that. But sometimes you just kind of got to accept that you can't do it all. Yeah. Yeah, so what's your score, James? Five. Five? I would give it a five. It was very much like, like I say, not the worst thing ever. Enjoyed it more than the Rings of Power, but... Did you enjoy just... it more than The Hobbit? I would re-watch The Hobbit now, I wouldn't re-watch that again right now. Fair. So I guess, no. I don't think I'll re-watch it in the cinema, I think it'll be one of those movies that I put on to fall asleep to. Yeah. I just love the world. Maybe in like a year or so and I'm like, no, let's, let's revisit yeah. and see how it is. Yeah. You know, without all the media attention that's got on it mm -hmm. right now, everyone's thoughts are out there, you're seeing scores everywhere. Um, and kind of give it another go. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's my initial, you know, we saw it a couple of hours ago, the way I feel about it. Yeah. Very middle of the road. Yeah, I think that's pretty fair. <laughs> I, wish it was, I wish it was higher. Yeah, so do I, so do I. But I feel like, you know, it's, it's worth a watch. But I'll, I'll leave it at that. Mm. Um, all right, let's, uh, yeah. Yeah, let's wrap that up. Let's wrap that up. <laughs> Let us know in the comments down below yeah. what you thought of it. Are we being too harsh? Are we being too forgiving? Um, did you like the characters? Did you like Helm? Did you like Hera? Mm. Let's, let's chat in the comments, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, mm. If we don't see you in this way, there'll be more videos, but if we don't see you like this before Christmas, have a great Christmas and a fantastic new year. Lots to come mm -hmm. in 2025. Yes. Big year, big changes. As always, we can't sit still. No. So we'll see what comes next. Big changes. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the Tabletop Alliance as well if you mm. want to see the War of the Rohirrim story continued on the tabletop. Yes. All right. Have a great day, guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on The Broken Sword. Bye, guys.